Hi, this is Brett with Garters Done Right, and I was doing a little uh, cage cleaning this morning, and I'm starting to think about projects for this coming season. It's July of 2020 now, and believe it or not, I'm already starting to think about 2021 projects, and I have a couple of them in mind. I wanted to share a couple thoughts with you guys, and this may not be popular, uh, and that's okay with me, but I want to share some ideas about how we intend to kind of manage our projects and, and kind of our thinking behind it. I'm personally just not a big fan of like conventional wisdom and doing things the way that we've always done them just because that's the way we've always done them. It's just part of my personality. I believe that some of the most exciting things in life come from trying new things and taking some risk. And again, that's uh, just who I am as an individual and it helps drive uh, the way that I think things through and, and plan things. And with that in mind, I want to talk a little bit a little bit about this concept of uh, secret projects. So when I say this, guys, the most important things I want to make sure everybody hears is I am in no way judging how anybody else uh, thinks, feels. Um, I'm not challenging anybody else personally. This is not a personal thing. Um, but I'll be honest with you, I don't get it. I don't get this whole secret project thing. Um, to me, the excitement about a new project is the, um, you know, doing something new, talking with other people about it, getting their feedback, getting them excited about it, and hopefully even collaborating with some people. So again, I'm not knocking anybody else who has their secret projects, but uh, that's just not me. So that's why this video is uh, is aptly named my secret, not so secret projects. So I have two in mind that I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm sure I'll come up with some other ideas, but I have two projects in mind. The first one, I think I'm going to call Project Orange Crush. And uh, I have a couple of animals in mind for this project. So I want to introduce you to Ernie. If you follow us, you probably have seen pictures of Ernie. Um, he's a really cool snake. He's very well behaved, super, super docile, loves to be handled. Uh, he'd actually rather be handled than put back in his, in his enclosure. And um, Ernie is a flame. Now what's interesting about Ernie is that most flames are shades of red. And this line of flames is actually, as you can see, uh, shades of orange. So not only is his belly orange, but you can also see that his lateral stripe is orange, his neck and chin are orange, his dorsal stripe is light. Um, pretty cool little dude, hopefully you agree. Now, this project, this, this would be the male, Ernie would be the male, is um, my intent is to cross him with a very specific locale <clears throat> that is pretty interesting. Let me show you. All right, so check this girl out. This girl here, as you can see, has a really beautiful orange dorsal stripe. She's also a pretty big girl. She too has orange on her belly, but it's different than, uh, than Ernie, right? So imagine if we could produce a line of babies that have the orange dorsal stripe from her and the orange uh, lateral stripes and orange neck and um, throat area of Ernie. Wouldn't that be beautiful? That will be Project Orange Crush, a 2021 project, and uh, we're really excited about it. Let us know what you think about this project. I have another project in mind I want to tell you about too. Okay, so let's talk about Orange Creamsicle. That's project number two. Now, what we're planning on with that one is to take this girl or this line of girls. I actually have two females and two males. So the orange creamsicle project will be this line crossed with a Florida, oh, what is she doing? With a Florida albino. The Florida albino is the T negative version, okay? So that's the whitest of the white in an Eastern albino. So picture a very light albino with hopefully a, that dorsal stripe. That will be orange creamsicle. 
So that's the two projects we have in mind, um, or two of the projects we have in mind for 2021 related to the orange line of garters that we're producing. And um, the creamsicle project, which again is the orange dorsal stripe locale crossed with the Florida albino, that project is pretty similar to another project that's being run by one of my friends, Joe Peck. He's got a really cool um, Alabama strain of Eastern that he's he's uh, doing a breeding project with. He's on a breeder loan with another friend. So good luck to you guys on that project. Uh, we see it as similar but different, right? Because they are different locales, but the result will probably be a similar looking snake to our creamsicle project as well. So I, on that note, one of the thoughts that, that I wanted to share is I'm really excited about this idea of collaboration. And I wanna make sure that I differentiate it from just the traditional breeder loan because I'm certainly not starting anything new with the concept of breeder loans. People have been doing that since people have been breeding animals uh, and, and including reptiles and specifically garters. In fact, I have a breeder loan going on right now uh, on an Eastern Blackneck project with Aaron Burt. Thanks, Aaron, for that, by the way. So again, uh, breeder loans aren't new, but this concept of collaboration, I think, is a little a little deeper than that. Sure, it starts with sharing sharing of animals, but it's more about the collaboration of of breeders coming together and looking at the collective uh, opportunities based on the stock that we have. Right. So. What I've seen happen in the, you know, about a year that I've been in the hobby is that there's a lot of competition. It's like this constant race to be the first one to produce some specific morph. And that's part of what's driving this, you know, kind of secret project stuff. Um, that's not interesting to me. What is interesting to me is to think, man, I've got all of these animals here. And instead of me being in a race to try to find all of the right pairings for myself to be able to produce um, these cool projects, I would rather look at what I have in terms of stock and inventory and look at what my friends have as well and really work with them to go, man, wouldn't it be cool if we took my female of this and your male of that and put a project together and then, you know, share share in the uh, excitement of the project and, and share in the, re the results or the rewards of the project um, that might come. That's exciting to me. That's what I want to do more of. And what you're going to see going forward, guys, is I'm going to be working with some of my friends in the hobby to do interviews and talk about projects, talk about their experience um, in the hobby because all of them have, have more experience than I do. So watch for that. I'm going to start doing that pretty soon. So uh, thank you. I had another thought that I wanted to share with everybody and I think it's important enough to edit the video and add this in. And that is that when you have a very special locale like we do in this uh, Eastern garter snake with the orange to red dorsal stripe, we believe it's our responsibility to continue to keep this line pure. In addition to the projects that we mentioned, we will also be running in parallel uh, projects to keep this uh, pure locality or pure strain going to the best of our ability. We've also ensured that there are some of these in the hands of very capable and responsible breeders so that if we don't have success, uh, hopefully they will. So I thought that was important and I wanted to make sure everybody was clear on that. Um, that's a priority to us and we'll make sure that it happens. So uh, thanks for watching. If you liked what you heard today, please like, subscribe, and um, give us some feedback. Let us know what you'd like to learn about next, okay? Thanks.